There's this expectation with DSLR mirrorless cameras that if you want the most from your photos, you're always gonna be shooting raw and you're always gonna edit in post to really bring out the colors from your photo. To me, that might have made sense a decade ago, but now even your phone can automatically process your images to bring out better colors and tones. There's a ton of technology that goes into that, but none of it's really made its way up to the DSLR or mirrorless cameras yet. When DSLR or mirrorless cameras go from raw sensor data to a developed photo, they typically apply a fixed color profile, which is usually a simple mathematical formula that maps input colors to output colors. So if you're someone who's designing a color profile, you might say to yourself, okay, grassy greens can be really overwhelming in a shot. So let's shift those grassy green colors a little bit towards blue. Or you might say, too much saturation in the highlights can look unnatural. So let's bring that saturation level down a little bit. The problem is most cameras give you about seven color profiles to choose from. And a lot of the adjustments those color profiles make are there to solve problems in difficult conditions not create pleasing photos. Let's quickly look at some of the challenges of rendering photos using a fixed color profile. Here we have four photos as they'd be captured by a camera sensor. Photos usually start as raw sensor data in what's called a Bayer matrix. So we need to apply a debayering process to get them to a photo like we would see. There's some choices that need to be made before debayering, like white balance, and there's some processing we need to apply after, like applying a transform matrix. So let's choose a white balance. We'll use the one the cameras chose for each photo. And let's apply the debayer and a simple gamma curve. And right off the bat, you can see we've got issues in each of these photos. So let's work on optimizing our color profile for the top left photo. We'll lift the shadows and pull down the highlights and then add some saturation. That makes photo one look pretty good. Now let's take those same adjustments and apply them to each of the other photos. And right away you can see we've got a lot of issues in photos two, three, and four. Let's go ahead and forget about one for a second and we'll try to fix photo two. Again, as we adjust for one photo, we ruin the other photos. We can do this for each of the photos, but at the end of the day, no matter how we design our profile, there just isn't a single set of adjustments that works well for all of these photos. The neural network in Arsenal Deep Color is essentially creating a custom profile for each photo. And because of this, you can get great looking shots that are ready to go right after you take the photo. Most people feel the need to edit their photos even if they're not going for a stylized result. In the past, color profiles were kind of the best we could do, but now thanks to advances in deep learning neural networks, we can write software that understands the scene. And on top of that understanding, we can build something better. With Arsenal 2, we've collected a huge training set of edited photos. Using that training set, we were able to create a neural network that learned how to make great adjustments across a wide range of scenes. We call this neural network Deep Color, and you can think of it as a tool that creates a custom profile for each photo you take. Deep Color is designed to give you great looking photos that are ready to be shared. But if you're someone who really enjoys editing, it can also save 16-bit DNG files to the onboard micro SD card slot. And those can be used as a great starting point for more stylized edits. Deep Color can make some pretty dramatic adjustments, but we've worked really hard to keep the results looking fairly neutral and true to life. It's very different from something like a filter where you're really adding a lot into the photo. Deep Color is designed to bring out the data that's already there in your raw file. Hopefully this gave you some insights into the way Deep Color works. Be sure to check out our Deep Color gallery for more examples of what Deep Color can do. Thanks.